Hello friends, I am Sejian Dr. Tarun Kumar Kanade, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, School of Sciences, Sage University, Bhopal. The topic which I am going to take today is introduction to quantum mechanics. Before quantum mechanics comes into the picture, there was a classical physics or classical mechanics, and this is used to explain Newton's law, force, torque, angular momentum, etc. In electricity, it is used to explain Ohm's law and Coulomb's law. In optics, it explains basically reflections, refractions, diffractions, interference, and polarizations. In classical physics, identical experiment gives you identical results, or we can say that truly identical experiments gives you identical results. Classical physics unable to explain very small particles like at molecules, atoms, electrons, nucleons. Particles at very high speed. That means it is also able to explain particles which are at very high speed. High speed means the comparable to the velocity of light. That is 10 or percent or 20 percent that of the speed of light. Another question arises that light as a wave or as a particle or as a countable particles. Light as a wave means reflections, refractions, interference, polarizations, and diffractions. But light as a particle could be explained by photoelectric experiments. In photoelectric effect, when light falls on a metal, electrons are emitted. If we consider light as a wave, then the experiment shall be fail or unable to give the proper results. But if light is taken as a particle or countable particles, and these are able to understand the experiments of photoelectric effect, light particles are known as photons. Number of photons or countable photons, it is equal to intensity of light. Energy of light or photons is equal to the wavelength of light. What is quantum mechanics? It is a wonderful, supernatural, spiritual course. Wonderful built up the imaginations. It's supernatural because the things which you are not able to see, it helps you to see that things through imaginations, of course, using physical and mathematical concepts. It's spiritual because it will open the doors for how to think and how to ask questions. The classical mechanics can successfully explain the motions of astronomical bodies such as planets, satellites, comets, motions of macroscopic bodies such as motions under gravity, rotational motions on an inclined plane, oscillatory motions on either side of equilibrium positions. Apart from this, the motions of charged particles in electromagnetic fields, vibrations in a stretched string, elastic vibrations in solids, propagations of sound waves in gases, flow of fluids, molecular motions in gases can also be successfully explained by classical mechanics. The classical mechanics, uh, the classical mechanics also explain the phenomena of light, like reflections, refractions, interference, diffractions, polarizations. It is could be successfully explained by transverse wave theory of light or Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. In all these phenomena, the study of this study of distributions of light energy takes place when passed through a medium aperture or obstacles. Now, in the Max Planck published a theory of black body radiations, that is the theory of thermal radiations in equilibrium with a perfectly absorbing body. In a black body radiations, by assuming that atom emits and absorbs discrete quanta of radiations with energy E is equal to H nu, where nu is the frequency of radiations and H is a fundamental constant of nature with value H is equal to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds. This constant is known as Planck's constant. In earlier in earlier early years of the 20th century, Max Planck, Albert Einstein, Louis D. Broglie, Niels Bohr, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, Max Bond, Paul Dirac, and other created the theory known as quantum mechanics. Now, this is the certain difference between the classical and quantum mechanics. Like classical mechanics describes the motions of macroscopic bodies, quantum mechanics describes the nature of object in atomic level. If initial states are known and of the objects. Future and past states shall be predicted. Energy, momentum, and angular momentum are quantized in quantum. Classical does not describe the wave particle duality. Quantum describes the wave particle duality. duality. In classical mechanics, future actions are predictable, whereas in quantum mechanics, actions are unpredictable. Classical is continuous, while quantum is discontinuous. Some of the examples of classical mechanics like projectile motions, linear motions. Transitions of electrons between energy levels of an atom, photons, and electromagnetic waves, etc. This is explained by quantum mechanics. Now, the following phenomena could not be successfully explained by classical mechanics, but could be explained by quantum theory like photoelectric effect, black body radiations, and Compton effect. In 1887, Hendricher is find that when electromagnetic radiation shines on a clean surface, metal surface, Electrons are emitted from the surface. This phenomena is called the photoelectric effect. The number of electrons emitted per unit time 
called the photo current depends on the intensity that is the brightness and frequency of light that shines on the metal surface. Experimentally, when ultra light ray or X rays are made to fall on metal surface such as zinc plate, free electrons from the metal surface begins to emit out from it, and this phenomena is called photoelectric effect. And the electrons so emitted are called photoelectrons. Now, this is a diagram. Basically, there is an evacuated glass bulbs. When ultraviolet rays falls on this plate B, electrons are emitted, and it is connected to a battery and galvanometer, and there is a deflections in the galvanometer. Now, figure shows the experimental arrangement to study the photoelectric effect. It consists of an evacuated glass bulb in which there are two electrodes, zinc disc A and metallic grade B. These electrodes are connected to a galvanometer G through a battery. In the absence of light, the deflections in galvanometer is zero. When ultraviolet light is made incident on the zinc disc A and the electrode B at its positive potentials, a deflection is obtained in the galvanometer G, that is, a current flows in the circuit, which is called photoelectric current. Now, what photoelectric effect? Experimentally, following facts regarding photoelectric effect were found. The photoelectric emissions occurs only when the frequency nu of the light incident on the metal surface is greater than a definite minimum value nu zero. This minimum frequency is called the threshold frequency of the given metal surface. The value of nu zero is different for different metals. The maximum kinetic energy of electrons emitted depends on the frequency of the incident light. It does not depend on the intensity of this incident light. The number of electrons depends on the intensity of incident light and it does not depend on the frequency. Electrons emitted from the metal surface as the light falls on it without any time lag. Uh, according to wave theory, on increasing the intensity of incident light, the amplitude of wave will increase. Hence, energy propagated by the waves will also increase. Consequently, free electrons will get more energy from the metal, and hence the energy of photoelectrons emitted must increase. But it is against the experimental fact that the energy depends on the frequency of incident light. According to wave theory, if the intensity of incident light is such that it can provide sufficient energy to bring out electrons from the metal, then whatever may be the frequency of incident light, the electron should emit from the metal surface. But it is against the experimental fact. That is, that for an, the electron emissions, the frequency of incident light must be more than a definite minimum frequency nu zero. The energy distributed by light waves will get distributed amongst all the electrons present in the area of the metal surface on which light falls. Therefore, it must take some time to acquire the energy needed for emissions of electron. Again, it is against the experimental fact because there is no time lag between the emissions of electrons and the light falling on the metal surface. Now, this is the equation like experimental facts from the photoelectric equations. Ek is equal to h nu minus h nu zero or hc upon lambda minus hc upon lambda zero, where nu is equal to c upon lambda and nu zero, which is the threshold frequency, which is equal to c upon lambda zero where lambda is the wavelength of incident light and lambda zero is the threshold wavelength. As the frequency nu of the incident light is gradually increased, the maximum kinetic energy of electron Ek also increases because the work function phi of the metal is surface is constant. Maximum kinetic energy of photoelectron depends on the frequency of incident light. On increasing the frequency of incident light, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectron increases. The maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons does not depend on the intensity of incident light. It only depends on the frequency. Now, on increasing the frequency nu of the incident light, the kinetic energy Ek of the photoelectrons emitted decreases and ultimately a frequency nu zero of the incident light is reached when the velocity of photoelectrons becomes zero. In these conditions, the kinetic energy of electron is zero and this frequency is called threshold frequency. If the frequency of photon incident on the metal surface is less than the threshold frequency from equation, it is clear that the kinetic energy of Ek of photoelectron will be negative, but kinetic energy can never be negative. Hence, the emissions of photoelectron will not possible. Number of photoelectrons emitted or photocurrent depends on the number of photons striking the metal surface. Each photon works independently, not jointly. Hence, the number of incident photons, more the number of electrons are emitted. The number of photons incident depends on the intensity of incident light. <clears throat> more the intensity of incident light, more is the number of photons striking the metal surface and hence more is the number of photons emitted as a result of which more will be the photoelectric current. Now the photoelectric depends on the intensity of incident light. 
Now, from there is a certain graph we will study. From one, we find that the slope of a straight line of the graph gives the value of Planck's constant h. The length of intercept of a straight line on negative energy axis gives the work function phi of the metal surface. On changing the intensity of incident light, the graph is unaffected because the kinetic energy of photoelectrons does not depend on the intensity of light. The point at which straight lines meet the new axis, that is the point P, the frequency corresponding to this gives the threshold frequency of the metal surface. For different metal surface, different parallel straight lines are obtained because the slope of each straight line remains constant. To measure the kinetic energy of photoelectrons, experimentally, the plate B of the bulb, as shown in previous figure, is kept at negative potential with respect to disk A, that for the incident light of frequency nu, the photoelectric current in galvanometer becomes zero, and this negative potential is called the stopping potentials and the cutoff frequency. If V is the stopping potentials for a light of frequency nu incident on a disk A, the kinetic energy of photoelectrons emitted half mv square is equal to ev, which is equal to h nu minus h nu zero. Now, <clears throat> again, experimentally, it is found that on increasing the frequency of incident light, the stopping potential v increases. That means the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons emitted increases, but the maximum value of photoelectric current remains unchanged. From figure, it is clear that on increasing the frequency of incident light from v1 to v2, the stopping potential increases from V1 to V2, but the value of maximum photoelectric current is same at each frequency. On increasing the intensity of incident light, there is no effect on a stopping potential, but the value of maximum photoelectric current increases. From figure, it is clear that the stopping potential is same whether the intensity of light is same or low or high. That is the kinetic energy of photoelectrons emitted does not depend on the incident light, but the maximum value of photoelectric current is more when the intensity of incident light is high. That means the quantum theory of light could successfully explain the photoelectric effect. In other words, the photoelectric varies the quantum nature of light. In 1921, Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize for the successful explanations of photoelectric effect. This is all about the introductions to quantum mechanics or quantum physics. Thank you.